Hi everyone and uh, welcome to part two of uh, Chris's Braille Scale Group Build uh, for anything that's 172 or smaller. Um, as you remember from the introduction, uh, my entry was going to be the uh, Type 95 Light Tank uh, by Dragon. Um, and as you can see, I finished it. And I expect you're wondering why is it all in bits. Well, quite frankly, this is one of these kits where I'm afraid everything is going to have to be fine detail painted uh, before I actually uh, put it all together. So let's have a quick run through with, with all the additions that I've been able to make before the painting process starts. Um, as far as the wheels go, uh, very nicely detailed, very impressed with those. Um, however, as you can see, uh, the tyres are going to need some serious attention as far as painting goes and there's no way I can do that with them stuck on uh, the actual tank so they'll be done separately um, the sprockets again are very nicely detailed there was no need to make any um, alterations to those at all um, and the same uh, with the rear uh, idler wheels these just had to have a little bit of flash cleaned up uh, but nothing of, of, of any major issue. Again, um, it's going to be a lot easier to paint these um, off the model than it would have done on. Um, the exhaust, uh, that needed uh, a, a bit of attention to it. Um, as you can see, uh, there was a lot of missing um, rivets, um, so those have been attached. There's also a small bra um, bracket plate, whatever you'd like to call it, underneath the exhaust stack itself. Um, so that's been added on and similarly um, at the other end um, some missing rivets uh, were added um, but yeah all in all uh, nicely done but again it's going to be a lot easier to do the rust effects on this off the model um, we also have a couple of machine guns um, they look very similar but they are in fact different um, so I've kept those on the sprue so I remember which one goes where uh, the PE part uh, for the actual um, exhaust cage, again, nicely detailed, and that was just bent into shape um, using a, a round bar and moulded over that, so that's fine. Um, I started to add a little bit of detail. Um, this is the um, shovel and pickaxe uh, that goes at the back of the uh, tank, and I've just added a little resin um, I don't know, bag of clothes, some sort of um, canvas material. Um, had a couple of little holes in in the resin, um, so I've just added some filler there and I'll clean that up. Um, but again, that will be painted off the tank. Um, here we have uh, the little storage box that goes next to it. Um, just needed to put a, a, a little plate in at the tap at the top there. Um, also, the um, boxes put onto the um, tank itself with a couple of plates. So this is the top half of the plates. Um, looks like I've got a rivet missing already on that one, so I'll just add that on. Um, but as you'll see when I run you through the tank. Uh, the, the other half of the plates already on the tank so that's the little toolbox um, I think that's it as far as the, the extras go um, these are the, the tracks um, rubber styled they are nicely detailed so I've got no issues with using those at all the turret um, again nicely detailed um, not a lot of work actually had to be done on this. Um, there was just a little plate here at the front that was added. Yeah, that was it. So yeah, no, no issues with that at all. So happy with that. So looking at the tank itself, working from the reverse. Uh, this plate here is actually a, a number plate. Um, it was one solid mould. Um, so what I've done, I've just uh, used the edge of a knife. Um, to, to give it a bit of form to make it more like an actual plate um, you'll also see some missing rivets um, have been added to the rear mud guards uh, on both sides um, I've also added um, some damage and that was quite a simple process of um, just scraping 
uh, making it a lot thinner and then getting the tweezers um, and creating that damage there and as you can see that I've done that on the front one as well um, underneath that there, there, there were a lot of um, ejector marks um, so they, they've been cleaned up they probably also may need a bit of uh, pigment on there when we do the weathering uh, but the detail was very nice and accurate so no no issues there and nothing had to be added um, on this central section some rivets had to be uh, added that were missing uh, for some strange reason the uh, lookout ports were, were, were missing so that, that was just easily done with a little bit of uh, plastic card disc and another rivet now with all my builds I like them to look a little bit different uh, to ones that other people have done uh, so what I've done here is um, scratch build um, a fuel um, drum based on a photo uh, that I came across with my research um, it's just a bit of um, 2.8mm uh, tubing, a couple of discs each end and then some uh, 03 wire um, which has been obviously bent and stuck around. It's been tied down uh, with rope. Um, I use nylon thread, don't use cotton because cotton frays terribly so use nylon thread um, and that should look quite neat once done. Um, on the hatch here uh, the, the, the top hinge was completely incorrect so that was replaced again some missing rivets put there uh, the grab handle that was a molded handle which didn't look very good at all so that was uh, taken out and replaced um, with a wire one again 0.3mm now on a lot of reference uh, photographs there is um, a star um, so I've just quickly made one out of uh, a bit of plastic card there uh, should look quite nice once painted up Again, on the front, just missing rivets really, and uh, they've been done on the um, sprocket drum as well. And I think that's it. So, basically what will now happen, uh, this will be given a bit of a clean, and it will all be uh, set up and uh, ready to start the painting process. So with everything now prepared, uh, cleaned up and ready for painting, um, it's time to uh, add the primer coat and I'll be using um, MIG Ammo One Shot, which is the brown oxide. goes on beautifully well, um, using it quite a bit now, so very pleased with that. All I will say is that because of the detailing um, on the 172 scale, it's very, very faint um, and we want to keep as much of that detail as possible. So the primer coat will be very, very light um, and there will probably still be quite a bit of grey showing through. The main reason for, for, for the prime for me on this build is to aid the um, hairspray chipping later on. So remember, very thin coats. So with the primer done, as you can see, still a little bit of grey showing through there, uh, which shows there's a nice light coat being applied. And the reason we had to do a light coat is that uh, we're going to be doing a four tone camo scheme. But basically um, I was surfing the net and um, these just um, jumped out at me so I thought, I thought I'd give them the go. Uh, I thought it would be ideal for this particular project. And what I'll also be doing um, is using AK's plastic putty. Um, I used to use a science putty, uh, which is this one here, um, but I did find it left a bit of a nasty residue on, on the model. So again, this is going to be the first outing for this as well. So this is turning into a bit of a practice model, uh, but hopefully um, it should all work out okay. Um, now with the uh, camouflage, uh, what um, I would normally do um, is lay down uh, the most extensive cover uh, color first and then um, start to use the putty to um, create the next color and then basically the next color then the next color so if, so eventually most of the model it would be covered in putty however doing it that way would mean that there's going to be another four layers of paint uh, going on the model and quite frankly I don't think the detailing would be able to withstand that so this time I'm going to do a little bit differently uh, where I'm going to actually section off each individual area 
uh, as I go, uh, somewhat more time consuming, but I think think uh, the um, it will be worthwhile doing. Um, and as always, uh, there will be hairspray chipping. So this will now get uh, a couple of coats of hairspray, and then I'll make a start on the first colour. All right, so I've literally just uh, finished painting this. Um, it's dried for a couple of minutes, and now I'm going to take it off. Um, some of the things I want to show you. Um, it seems to be a problem with all sorts of masking. The way it all sags and it loses its form, um, which is uh, somewhat of a pain um, when you're when you're trying to create uh, intricate um, shapes uh, for the mask. So that's somewhat disappointing. Um, but like I say, it does seem to be the nature of using these these types of masks. Um, so let's see if we can try and get some of this off. So there we go, uh, very pleased with that. Um, no residues being left at all, um, and it's quite a nice pattern. Um, one thing I wanted just, just to show you, um, if you can just see here, uh, we've got a little bit of overspray. Now because you, um, I actually used hairspray, all I can now do is just get some water and that will come off quite easily. And then while I'm doing it, I'll uh, chip uh, away at the areas where the, there's the most wear, like hinges and hatches, um, around the edges of the mud guards, etc. And that will conclude the uh, first part of this uh, camouflage scheme. So the uh, ammo work is now been finished and chipped um, and now the model is now ready for all the fine detail painting. The um, MIG ammo uh, acrylic set, uh, nothing to write home about, um, managed to get it uh, working after a fashion needed thinning and airbrush needle drying out, the, the usual problems with acrylic paints. Um, and as far as the uh, AK camouflage plastic putty, uh, again nothing to write home about uh, just the same as the cheap stuff um, so but we got there it's all it's all done now um, very happy um, looking forward to doing all the fine detail painting so all the fine detailing has been done um, so we'll have a look I'll try and get this in focus as best as possible uh, so this is the sprocket um, what I try to do um, on the parts that aren't camouflaged um, is to put a, a wash of um, Vallejo's metallics so in this case burnt uh, iron um, and as you can see it does give a nice f effect uh, with the red oxide showing through as well um, it does look better on 135 scale but it's, it's not too bad on 172 um, and as you can see uh, all the teeth um, have been uh, covered in steel and then the very back um, which won't get seen unless you're very careful um, that's been done in burnt iron as well now everything I'm, I'm going to be showing you uh, on this particular section of the uh, video is what I would call the factory look so there's still a long way to go uh, with washes um, with layering uh, splatter marks um, and the use of oils so, like I say, this is the factory look that we're now looking at. Next we have the wheels. Um, again, the um, burnt iron was applied on the back. The tyres were done using dark rubber. Um, basically use it as, as a wash and let the capillary action go up to the rim makes life a lot easier if we have a look at one of the camouflage wheels there we are and then again same on the back with the um, wash 
of burnt iron over the red oxide. The smaller wheels, um, exactly the same principle. Um, as you can see, you've got the burnt iron in there as well. So they came out well. The exhaust has been done. Uh, first off, there was a base coat of uh, Vallejo's Metallics uh, exhaust manifold. And then using uh, a series of uh, light washes, and I mean very light, basically dirty water. First we did dark rust, um, then rust, then light rust, yellow rust, and orange rust. And that builds up to, to create that light, nice patination. Um, a little bit of black on the uh, exhaust pipe. And then once dry, the whole lot is given a wash of smoke. So very pleased with the way that's come out. The uh, tools, um, the shovel head and the pickaxe head were done with anthracite grey. Um, good old old wood for the um, rope around the bundle as well as the actual um, shafts of the tools. And the actual bundle itself uh, was base coated as khaki and then given a wash of hemp. The um, machine guns, they were very simply dry brushed to keep the detail using um, black metallic. The uh, rear idler wheels here, it was just a matter again of uh, silvering the back and the sides and obviously uh, where it touches on the uh, exhaust, uh, on the tracks and the uh, jack um, that again was with uh, burnt iron uh, and given a dark rust wash now the actual main tank itself um, what I just mentioned on the jack was done exactly the same on the oil drum um, and the rope was uh, old wood the cover for the exhaust was uh, initially primed with the red oxide and then the camouflage colours that correspond with that particular area on the tank uh, were then applied in this particular case it was the green and the yellow. On the underside of the tank itself um, a coat of dark earth has been applied. As you can see the uh, gold star on the front has come out well, um, that was using uh, bronze, um, the little hook um, again was burnt iron. Coming around this side, there wasn't any fine detailing there. Uh, the, the back cables, um, I was a bit lazy here, uh, to be honest I should have replaced these, um, but basically uh, they've been uh, coloured uh, steel and just to make them stand out a little bit uh, German cam black has been put on uh, 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 as the shade um, we have red tail light colour there and then coming round again uh, we have the um, burnt iron uh, for the, for the um, crowbar along the side um, so that's pretty well much it um, what will happen now is that the whole thing will be given a uh, coat of um, gloss varnish and then what we will do um, is add on the decals. So the decals have been added um, uh, they're not very good there we go and also on the turret in uh, hindsight I would have probably been better off um, doing my own stencils but uh, not to worry, once the weathering is done I'm sure they'll be fine. Um, so what I've done, I've laid down um, a coat of matte varnish over the whole uh, of the model and parts using um, Windsor & Newton's Galleria. And what I'd now do is add on a, a second coat uh, before the weathering process starts. Um, but what I want to do is just to add some uh, pigments. Um, I'm not here to generate any texture. All I'm wanting to do is just to do some staining. Um, so I'll just add some dark pigments along the bottom here and the reason I'm doing this is because I'm a big fan of uh, the layering process um, whereby we can actually create 
depth to the actual model itself by applying layers and layers of different mediums in this particular case um, being pigments so there's some dark there's some medium colors and then we have some light in there as well and as you can see all I'm doing is just staining um, and discoloring the bottom half of the tank so I'll also be doing that on the bottom of the turret we'll put a little bit of black on the end of the exhaust uh, a little bit of dark around the um, toolbox and then once that's done um, I'll add another layer of matte varnish and then we can start on the oil work so with the final coat of matte varnish now completely dry um, I applied a uh, filter of raw umber um, I make my own filters and washes using oils um, and as you can see that um, this particular filter is, is just basically dirty water um, or should I say dirty thinner um, and that was applied all over using the uh, Windsor and Newton raw umber um, now what I'm going to do is to go around each individual uh, colour uh, the browns, the greens and the yellows and do some shades and highlights um, so I've loaded uh, my oil palette uh, with three versions of green um, which are the uh, Viridian Hue along with the uh, green light and finally um, faded green um, now with the obviously being such a small area um, oils go a long long way so what you need to do is just to thin down uh, the paint, uh, the oil paint, and blend it in um, as best as you possibly can. Use a hairdryer to dry out, and then you can blend in the next shade as well. And before you know it, the whole area would have been done. And I'll show you some stills uh, once completed. Okay, so all the uh, oil shading and highlighting has now been done. Uh, so let's just run through a few things. Uh, the palette, um, as you can see, I, I added a couple of yellows, uh, which was uh, lemon yellow, as well as cadmium yellow pale hue. Now, I wasn't happy with the uh, original colour uh, that was on the acrylic as far as the um, dark brown goes. I thought it should be more of a chestnut brown. Uh, so I've highlighted that now uh, with dark brick red, and that looks a lot better. Um, and the lighter brown uh, that was done with um, earth so let's have a look and see how that's all turned out um, there we go with the base some nice contrast very difficult to tell on the video so I'll, I'll do some stills but uh, there are some lovely contrasts uh, there the um, wheels you may be able to see the effect a lot better there and also on the turret so that particular part of the process is now complete and what we'll now do is um, start to um, finish off the smaller parts like the back of the wheels and the uh, tools etc um, and do all that pre-shading and then once that's complete uh, I can start on the pin washes Moving on to the wheels, I want to uh, add some dust effects onto the uh, tyres. Um, so what I'm going to be using is uh, Winsor Newton Naples Yellow Hue. And all we need to do is to, again, put some on the palette. And then with a round two brush, moistened in with thinner, all you need to do is just to apply a thin coat around the edge and then once you've done both the wheels just simply get um, a small piece of sponge and just gently dab it and take off the excess and there you go you get a nice patination on the tyre. 
Here are some that I've done earlier that have now dried out so you can get a better idea of the effect that you're going to get. So before I start doing all the uh, pin washes, the uh, final bit of shading uh, will be all the dark shadowy areas and for that I'll be using a burnt umber. Um, it's quite a simple process, um, basically just added on uh, sort of consistency of a wash into all of the sort of cracks and the crevices and then at the same time using a clean brush to blend it all in. So with the final shading now complete using the uh, burnt umber, what we now need to do is to try and make all these details pop and look more defined and to do that we'll do a pin wash uh, using raw umber. With the finishing line in sight, just run for a few things. Um, as you can see, there's been extensive uh, splatter marks done um, initially with uh, four different shades of uh, oils, light and dark, and then finished off with uh, two shades of um, pigments, uh, again, light and dark. Um, and now, all at now, uh, oh, sorry, uh, there was some other dust work, um, as you can see around the areas here and there and also some uh, streaking effects um, which basically to do dust streaking effects is exactly the same as what you would do with your normal um, streaking effects with oils but in this in this case all you need to do is just use um, a light pigment um, thinned out with um, thinners and just use the same principles of feathering um, so yeah, all, all that now leaves to be done is to do some oil stains, engine stains and for that what I'll be using is uh, Van Dyke Brown oils along with um, engine grease and also uh, mix oil and grease stain mixture. Attaching the tracks on any tank model can always be a challenge um, so what I've done here um, is that I've actually glued the two bogies into place as as well as the rear uh, idler and then what I will do I will run the tracks around the uh, sprocket at the front um, tighten it all up make sure everything's okay and then glue that into place then once dry I'll add in the two support wheels and add in some sag so let's actually have a look at the tracks now um, they were given a uh, primer, brown uh, oxide primer, like the rest of the vehicle, um, and then they were covered in uh, burnt umber, and then they were given a dry brush of burnt iron uh, to give highlights on the track teeth, and then after a couple of coats of uh, matte varnish, uh, the pigment work was added by just doing some light and dark pigments and I think that's come out rather well. So as you can see from the stills, the uh, tracks were a complete disaster. Um, all I can think of is that I just had a senior moment and completely forgot to put the matte varnish on. Um, so when the pigments and the oil washes were put on, it obviously attacked um, the paintwork. And uh, as soon as I just touched it with my fingers, it, it, it all just fell apart. Um, so joys of uh, doing uh, armoured vehicles, uh, the uh, tracks are always an issue. Um, as you can see, I, I pretty well much patched them up now and... Um, I don't think you can really see uh, an issue now. 
Um, one thing uh, just to add to the fun and games, uh, when I did this side, the uh, pin for the, the sprocket decided to fall off as well, so uh, that all had to be repinned. Um, but uh, I'll put everything together now. All that leaves me to say is thanks very much to Chris for allowing me to take part uh, in his group build. Um, I'm now going to put everything uh, together and leave you with a short video and some stills of the final build. Um, let me know what you think. Hope you enjoyed the build as much as I did. And it just leaves me to say thanks very much for your continued support for my work. And subscribe me to my channel. And I look forward to seeing you on my next project. Happy modelling everybody. Thank you.